Okay guys, welcome back. Today we've got a lot of fabrication to do. We're gonna do a, try and do a couple different things. Uh, first one we'll talk about is, you see the radiator on this uh, V12 is black. I went ahead and took that out the other day and sent it off to our friend Dave over at Roll Radiator. And he went through it and, um, what does he call it? He rotted it out, so he basically cleaned it out, um, patched a couple leaks that were on the tanks and sent it back to us. Uh, we were thinking about recoring it and uh, putting a core in that had um, 11 fins per inch uh, instead of uh, what's in it now, 8 fins per inch. But we decided against that for the time being uh, to see if this radiator will handle this engine. I doubt it will, but it just depends how hard you load it. Um, so that's, we're waiting on the fan. I went down to Missouri. Uh, last week and picked up a fan and it wasn't quite right the center hub was the right size so it, it'll center on there real nice but the bolt pattern was about a half an inch off to to mate up with this hub so we sent it off and had those holes milled out into slots and I'm gonna pick that up this afternoon uh, let's see what else um, the frame rails so if you guys saw the last video the frame rails are off of a 4440, I believe. They're off of a 40 series tractor. And you can see here, I went ahead and um, I got this air cleaner out of the way. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna do something different there, I think. Um, we got the frame rail cleaned up here. We got the steel cut. We don't have the capabilities to do this at the farm yet, but um, we got the steel cut at five and a half on one side and about seven and a half on the other side because uh, this frame tapers. So we'll get that laid in there, weld it all up, and then we'll talk about something else we're doing today. Okay, so we got the first one welded up. Uh, I didn't do any measuring on spacing for these welds. I just kind of eyeballed it and made a weld that was about the length of this brass piece here on the welder. Made a weld that was about that length and then spaced it out the length of from the tip to uh, here. I just put it up there like that and got it pretty close and they look look, look pretty good. So. Got that done. We got to do the other side yet. But before that, I'm going to tackle the fan. I told you guys about that earlier. Uh, I had the fan sent off to Spathe Welding and they took the holes and made them into slots basically so we can bolt that fan up. Um, I'm concerned about clearance with the radiator so we're going to get that in there and see what it looks like. Okay, so I got <clears throat> both holes are lined up just about where they're supposed to be. There's a little bit of play, not a ton, but I'll show you guys here in a second. Let me just measure this. Yeah, we're talking like three eighths of an inch. I guess that's not super tight, but it's certainly tighter than the fan that wasn't here. Um, I don't have the the other fan that he used. I think he made it. He made it. Actually, I've got this. So this was the uh, the hub that this guy made to match the uh, the hub on the uh, <clears throat> engine. And from this, he used a couple of these 
and made fan blades out of fiberglass and riveted it all together. Um, so we used this pattern and put it on that fan, or Spath did, and they milled out those holes. So that gives you an idea of how he made that fan. And this one's metal. I told you guys I got, out of, got it out of a junkyard. And let me see if I can't zoom in here and show you guys how close we're, we're in here. Okay, I got you as close as I can. But just for reference, stick my, I can't even fit my pinky in there. That's how tight that is up there. And we're pretty much where we're supposed to be. Uh, we can push that forward just a hair. Um, God, we're looking good though. That should work out great. Okay, so now that we know the fan's gonna work, we can go on to this next side here. So we've got a couple things to talk about here. First of all is the batteries. So um, got a sidetrack here a little bit, but if you watched the first video, we talked about some of our ideas, how we were gonna remove these batteries and get smaller ones, relocate them up into the battery box. But to save some time, um, for rain tool, we're just going to run with these batteries for now. We're going to make an aluminum cover to cover them. It'll tidy it, tidy, tidy it up just a little bit. Um, but we found out the reason for these big batteries, and that's because <clears throat> there's not an alternator on this tractor. He didn't, um, he didn't put an alternator on this engine. So uh, when we come back and, and redo all this in the winter, we're going to outfit it with an al alternator and get all that hooked up. Um, we did the same thing on the 5020 with the AP71T and got those wi that wiring all to work and it works really well. Um, and once we have an alternator, we can get rid of these big batteries and go with two smaller ones and still keep it as a 24 volt system, but have some smaller batteries and put them up in the box where they should be. Um, with that being said, since we're keeping these batteries, we're only gonna run this uh, frame rail cover up into the back of the battery box. So uh, we've got that another piece of really long um, uh, sheet that's five and a half on one side and seven and a half on the other. We're only going to need about half of it-ish to come up to the battery box. And um, like I said, once we convert this to a power shift in the winter, we'll come back and we're going to redo the frame rails really nice and fix all that up. This is just really temporary to make it look a little bit better for the show because um, it's going to be sitting next to a couple really nice tractors that we're taking so um, yeah that's the plan let's get a measurement and get this one on Okay, this one's welded up now. I'm happy with how those turned out. Um, like I said, I didn't extend it forward because we're gonna leave this battery box just for the time being, just for the show, and that'll be it for this. So, got one more project today that I wanna try and get done. Um, I may just tack it up and finish it tomorrow. It's one that I'm pretty excited about, and I think you guys will like it once it's all done. Uh, so let's go take a look at that. Okay, it's the next day. Turns out I didn't have the right filler rod to make this, but now I do. Um, so my initial plans were to make, I was hoping to have this like not done and show you guys me making it, but I went ahead and made it already. So um, basically I wanted to make a uh, front plate for this tractor for Rain Tool uh, to kind of show everybody that this is what we did. Uh, it'll say Renner Stock Farms on the front with a couple uh, logos and then on the sides it'll have uh, the Kinsey logo, Repower logo, and 5020 HB71T. Uh, so to get this plate on there, originally I was going to take the the regular carriage bolts that come flush with this bolt here, drill a hole in them and tap them and then run a spacer out for your plate but I didn't want to take strength away from that bolt because it holds up a hundred pound weight. So I went ahead and got longer carriage bolts and made threads that go all the way down um, and took these bolts to a friend of ours in Belleville 
and they went ahead and drilled and tapped a quarter inch thread on the inside so you can take a quarter inch bolt and run it in there like so. And that will hold your plate on. And this, this saves you from drilling all the way back here and losing strength where it holds on the weight. Um, I borrowed these tools that Jake's got. It's basically, it threads into that quarter inch hole that I told you about and it's got a little point on the end so when you go and put your plate up against it and you get it where you want you can tap on the plate and it'll give you a uh, mark on the center of that hole and that way you know where to drill your holes so so i've already got the top two holes uh drilled out so i can bolt those up there and then i'll uh, tap these uh, two smaller ones the way that i did this was i got the plate up there uh, with this cart and i got I did one hole at a time, so I got the height right on one side because this, this cart doesn't pick up totally level. I got the height where I wanted it to on that side and side to side, right? Uh, tapped on it, got my hole, drilled it, put a bolt in there, leveled it out, and got this hole. Now I can take and bolt up the top two and the bottom two will be lined up. So let's go ahead and do that. Now you can see we've got one mark that focuses right here, and the other one is right there. Okay, got the last two holes drilled on the bottom here, and everything lines up real well. I made this out of eighth inch stainless because we plan on polishing it and putting the logos on there like I told you guys. Um, I went, eighth inch sounds pretty heavy, but I went with that because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to bolt it down on the side here at all, so I wanted it to be pretty sturdy. Um, the last thing I want to do to this before I send it off to get polished is you can see the starter weight on a true deer starter weight. They have this taper here and it kind of hides behind this plate here. But I want to match this leftover thickness here. I want to match that to here and then take it and follow it up here. Um, I think that'll look uh, pretty good. I may, I may even start up here and come up because I want it to end uh, right about here, about halfway um, up the starter, or halfway thick on the starter weight. I want to end it about there. So really the angle may turn out to be kind of like that. Um, cut that off. And there's also a taper down here. I'll go and, and cut that off like that. So, so here we go. Here's the finished edge here. You can see I this plate was back to here. I went ahead and cut that out so it matches the profile of the starter, comes down and matches the bottom profile of the starter weight. So that all looks really good. I'm not a professional TIG welder yet, so I went ahead and smoothed out my TIG welds. Um, I'm, I'm sure this is still strong enough. I've got four or five uh, heavier welds uh, in the back there to hold that. And if worse comes to worse, I've got enough room in there that I can put some gussets in. And I, I might just do that um, while, I'm, while I'm doing this before I get it polished and, and put decals on it. But yeah, that's going to be it. My idea was to kind of give it that um, tractor pull look. Uh, a lot of those guys have those big tanks up front where they put water and stuff. And this kind of... Um, imitates that in a way and it looks kind of cool and it brings some of the chrome forward you know because you got your chrome air cleaner your stack uh your your covers for your uh your valve covers and now you'll have some stainless up here and a big renner stock farms logo and it should look pretty good okay so that's going to be it for this video hope you guys enjoyed we got the fan put in i'm going to make a shroud for that hopefully this week it's going to be a little difficult but i think i can pull it off uh the frame rails are buttoned up for now uh, we're going to get the battery cover made here this week, and we got that front plate done for the other 5020. So, hope you guys enjoyed. I will be sure to uh, keep you guys posted, and uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one.